It's late July here in Northern Europe and I'm making my way back to Bigfoot Lake. I've called it that simply because of the story I was told about an unidentified creature that couldn't be explained. And despite this and my own experience, I'm a skeptic. And my plan is much like the last time, camping, fishing, and exploring by boat and on foot. and uh, the weather looks great and I'm on my own which is a nice thing at this time of year you get a lot of uh, berry pickers from Thailand over here picking all the bilberry and uh, cloudberry and lingonberry and other stuff because uh, you know they make food out of it obviously in Sweden there are companies that operate here so yeah there's, there's nobody about um, but the weather might change I've seen that we might get some thunderstorms later so I think I'm gonna park the vehicle next to this big metal roof that might seem stupid but better the roof tent not get hit and the roof get hit if you know what I mean I think that's where I'm gonna be that might be a stupid idea Feels a bit more ominous this time, don't know why. Hopefully I've made the right choice for the positioning of the vehicle. It's behind the cabin like it was last time and in all fairness, like the wind comes in like this and uh, so does the rain. So it means I get a better night's sleep. But the main thing is, is I'm kind of blindsided. So if Bigfoot is tearing through the tree line, windmilling a semi in my direction, I won't know. I won't know until I can hear it. You know, people think like the whoop whoop sounds that he makes are, uh, you know, his voice, but it's not. He's just spinning that thing round like real fast, like suddenly, like, you know, that's something. people really don't know what they're talking about. You know, you should really be watching this channel to get the facts right. But anyway, this is the location where I told you somebody saw some identified creatures. Uh, you know, I'm not saying I believe that, but it is a beautiful spot. But actually, I just wanted to come back here mainly to take the boat out on the water. I got a creaky leaf spring. Probably means it's dying. You'll have to forgive me, it's just in my nature. I, uh, I'm gonna have a cup of tea before I get the boat sorted. First time I've actually been out where now I've got all my electronics sorted. So fridge, inflatable doll, interior lights, which is pretty cool. Don't really need them at this time of year. There's one under there as well and one in the back. Um, and yeah, the diesel heater and that's the compressor. And I used to have tools in this gull wing, but now I've put the electronics in. So obviously the switches can be changed around if I decide to change stuff over. A little fuse box, MPPT, so solar, and that's the smart charger and some bus terminals and fuses and stuff. So the battery is actually under here now. I'm going to get another one. I, sh I did do a video about this, but well, you know, can appreciate not everyone really watches it because they're not that interesting. But a couple of metal battery boxes. Obviously AGM for winter use, um, so a couple of those should be, should be great really.
This is really only the second time I've been out on this little inflatable boat. The last time I was up in the north on a little lake doing some fly fishing, it was absolutely perfect. I ideal boat for just getting off the, off the shore and just going to do some fishing and, and you know, you want to you be able to cast easier, things like that. But uh, for, for this kind of thing, it's not really the right kind of boat. It doesn't have any attachments here and here to put the oars in. So I'm using this, um, this paddle basically that I would probably more likely use on a kayak, for example, something narrower. But this is kind of as good as it's going to get really. So it's working, but it's just a bit, a bit odd. It's an epic portage. YOLO! Get back to get the drone out. Trying a new technique, which uh, isn't, isn't great because obviously I'm at the front and uh, that's not ideal, but it, it is a lot more comfortable. Um, I'm just shaking my ass down the lake and it seems to be working. Second camp, tracking Bigfoot. I'm fairly certain I'm downwind of his ass because it's... The smell is almost intoxicating. Cast away. It's either bites or plants, and I'm guessing. No, no, we got one. That's a decent perch as well. Don't you dare get off that hook. That's a good eating size, to be fair. If you get a few of those, you're all right. Here we are. I thought down by the edge there looked good. Well, he's hooked decent, so there's no, no chance of uh, things going wrong. But I will catch as many of these as I actually can, and what I don't eat, I'll take him and put in the freezer. Because, you know, it's decent food. Sorry, pal. Got a big and got some salad. Go with dinner. It's a pretty hunter forager here, so it's basically shut the fuck up. I had a small pike on the line and now a massive pike has just bit the small pike and won't let it go. So, uh, well, it's not a massive pike, but a bigger pike. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> oh, now I've got to get them both off. Hopefully they don't pop the boat. I cannot get these guys off. That is, uh, that is one thing is for sure. He definitely doesn't want to let him go. You can see it in his eyes. Well, he's swallowing him. Oh shit. Now it's game over. That's enough, that's enough. Don't do any more. Greedy bastard. Oh mate, you're swallowing a hook. Oh, now I've got him and he's let the little fish go. <laughs> there you go, the little fish is totally KO'd. I'm gonna have to tire this guy out. He's feisty. Son of a bitch! There you go, pal. All right.
It's a beautiful place, I've got to be honest with you. I'm, I love it when I'm out here. I'm always a bit apprehensive before, before I head out. Um, and then when I'm out here, it's sort of just, it's what exactly what I needed. So I'm really glad, but the weather's taking a bit of a turn. But the good thing is, is I'm heading back to camp now. I'm going to fish more around that area because it's stones and all this silt and everything. I'm just catching pike after pike after pike and it's doing my head in. I don't really want to eat pike. So I'm um, going to go back to the perchy area I was at last time and see what that's like. mission. Bad on the fishing though, not great fishing. made it make that noise on purpose just so you know it's like men are do that it's a lot later than I thought it was it's um uh, almost seven o'clock in the evening so I have been out for quite a while it's eight degrees in the fridge it's not bad so uh, yeah I've been, I've been on the been on the lake for maybe maybe six and a half hours something like that just got some wood for a fire because it's getting a bit mozzy -y. And uh, yeah, I'm probably going to set camp up now and then make dinner. Maybe I should just get dinner on now, actually. I've got to quickly get this fish done. It's been on the boat for a while. Bit of a shame, really, I didn't get more, but uh, you know, that's just the way it goes sometimes. I mean, I could have taken the pike and done the old five fillet method but I just I just really didn't fancy it the plan was to go out foraging for some mushrooms and then uh, catch some fish and put together a bit of a, a decent feed uh, but you know it doesn't always go that way does it an utterly atrocious performance but um can't expect anything more from me. Um, that'll do. I generally eat pretty simply. I'm just getting some rice on. Gonna use some butter, gonna cook up some steak. That's basically it, that's all I'm having. Would have had some fish, um, battered fish, if I'd have caught enough, but I'm shit, so that's that. Uh, and if I get hungry later, I've got some other things as well, like eggs and stuff like that too. So there we go. Basically gonna get some dinner on. Been a really lovely day though, I've really enjoyed it. It's a nice spot. I know that there's some eerie stories surrounding it and maybe, you know, you never know what will happen. I, I'm pretty sure nothing will happen and I'll be absolutely having a sound night as per usual, but uh, you know, might have jinxed it. He might come out that wood line swinging and I don't mean his fists. So who knows, but uh, you know, the things that I don't like about forest are, I don't mind the old spruce you see up there where you've got the cliffs and the spruce. It's just left alone and I, it's one of my favourite spots actually. But it's this I don't like. I hate thick bush. <sighs> All right, shut up. Um, where they've clearly like logged it and then it's been replanted and it's just kind of all 
in that infancy again and, and you know it's got really poor visibility because I've had some I had a weird experience once um, and it wasn't a dogging site in an area that was just like that and something was just just hiding in that tree line um, probably out of semi it's probably Gollum he's probably just he's tailing me he knows I'm such a good fisherman that there's always something on the menu can't blame him really but anyway I've made very light of that but yeah I did have a strange experience and yeah I kind of I kind of ever since it sort of yeah just gets the old red, red flags going but uh, yeah, I try not to let it stop me getting out and doing the things I I enjoy yeah whatever mate I wasn't sure about this meat, but it's okay. I thought it was going to be like boot leather, but we'll see. A little bit well done, but that's, you know, kind of how I like it, if I'm honest with you. Sorry, not sorry. And, uh, Bit of bacon as well. Well, what a cracking view in front of me. It's great. I still love this. It's just like it's the only time my brain isn't like going at a thousand miles an hour when I'm out here. You know. Also, when I'm working on projects in my garage, I love that too. sitting eating my dinner and just heard a very loud sort of deep growling noise just keep my eyes peeled really Well, that was dinner done. It was actually pretty good. The steak wasn't too chewy. There were a couple of bits that were, but most of it was all right. So uh, I might sort of buy some more or take the rest home, obviously, and do some experimenting in the kitchen, see see what it's like. But uh, now I need to get the roof tent set up, really, which won't take long. But you know, it's it's not. It's a lot later than you actually imagine. I think it's about ten o'clock at night. So uh, although it's summer and it never really gets dark, it's starting to get to the point where we're coming to the end of summer here in the Northern Hemisphere. Weirdly, I was having dinner. I was just sat there eating, obviously, and, and I like heard this low, like growl, like like that. And I'm not saying that was Bigfoot. It sounded like a cat, basically, like a lynx or something, which. I would, I would be very surprised if that would approach the camp. I mean, you do have bears and things here, but you generally don't, you know, if there's a bear around, they're, they're pretty silent creatures, to be honest with you. And, and I'd, again, be very surprised if a bear would come into camp at this time of year, especially, you know, may, maybe when they've just woken up and 
they're a bit sort of like really hungry like ravenous and stuff and they're curious or they're young or something but you know i've seen some videos of them doing that and it's happened to me myself really in february when one woke up early but yeah i mean it's really weird it sort of spooked me to be honest with you but aroused me at the same time not a pike. Is it a pike or is it a perch? Young pike, young pike are biting today. That's what it's all about. Really young pike. Well, it's been a great day. Really enjoyed myself. A lot of fishing. I didn't realize I was out on the lake for so long. But I just did a little bit more fishing now and uh, just caught a very small pike, a lot of young pike biting now. And uh, yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Like I really want perch today and now I'm pulling in pike. So it's just the way it goes. But the sun's going to go down a little bit more than it is at the moment. Um, but it won't really get dark for very long, if that. And then the sun comes up again at about 2 a.m. But anyway, I'm going to go to bed and uh, I was going to set the camera up for a time lapse and maybe just kind of record everything that's going to be happening overnight. I think I'm probably going to do that. And uh, hopefully it's uneventful and I'll, uh, I'll see you in the morning. Well, it was a very sound night. I slept like a baby. Literally woke up every hour screaming. I'm not really sure why they say that, but no, I, I slept great and uh, there were no disturbances, no weird sounds. Um, the camera was dead in the morning. There was some sort of technical failure on the camera. The battery has 75% on it because it's, it's a huge lithium battery is strapped to the back of the camera. And I leave that on in the winter. If you've seen some of the winter camps, you know, I capture the Northern Lights with it and everything. So it, it can usually run to about minus 20 degrees C for let's say a period of about six to seven hours. So at this time of year, I'd expect it never to shut off, but the, the camera had some kind of technical failure. Also, it's not a night time lapse, even though I set it as a night time lapse, and that is what the file is, because I checked it. It doesn't adjust itself to the darkness, you know, that the length, the duration of the shutter speed isn't changing. So I expect Bigfoot has something to do with it, really. He's probably, He's probably, uh, you know, tapped into the to the whole thing and 
Yeah, you know, it's like, or maybe one of his farts drifted in and, and they're so thick and dense that the camera has no way of seeing through it. And that's actually why it looks like nighttime, but it isn't. It's actually daytime, but he's, he's dropped a, he's dropped a good one. I'm thinking of staying here one more night. Um, and I'm probably going to go out on the boat again or go for quite a long hike up to those like cliffs over there because it looks really interesting and that's a lot of old spruce forest up there so it'll be really cool to check that out. I'm probably going to pack away the roof tent for two reasons. One, security. Two, it's super easy to, to pack away and put up again so it really is no big deal. Three, so there were only two reasons but now I've thought of another, um, solar. I'd like some solar. So I've parked the car in a dumb position. You can actually drive the vehicle with it open, but I'm just not going to bother. I mean, it's all pretty much ready to roll for later anyway. I've got to grease that a bit. Well, I've locked the tyre carrier so you can't actually open it. It's another nice little security feature, really, of, of having a tyre carrier that locks. Um, I've actually had people open it before while I've been away because I've come back and it's been open but opened incorrectly. And they've then let it swing back, and I've got a huge dent in the rear hatch where um, someone obviously tried to do that and didn't really know how it worked. I guess they're curious about it, but still, it shouldn't really be something that they're playing with because it's not their fucking vehicle. But um, yeah, camp secured. Let's go. What the heck is that? It's like a thermal exchanger or something. Yeah, I see the building now. Why are there always collapsed cabins where I have weird experiences? That is a cool stove. All the rings are, uh, are gone mine. come down. So whilst I'm on this hike I'll tell you a story because I keep saying I had a weird experience but I'm not really saying what that is. Um, so uh, it's kind of a strange story actually but basically uh, about 35 kilometers from here about well, six years ago now back when the Jeep was on 32s um, that's how I remember it, sad. Uh, yeah, I went, I went like up a little trail to like a viewpoint. So I was new in town and I was thinking, oh, I want to find the highest point so I can basically, uh, get a great view and scope out a cool campsite, you know, somewhere I can like camp with the vehicle, but also go up with, uh, the hammock and the MSR tent and just kind of like, uh, you know, just enjoy myself. So I found something, it was about 750 meters up, so not that high. And a little mountain road took you part way. Um, so I drove as far as I could and then I parked up, but there were no trails. It wasn't like there was a hiking trail to get there. So I basically just, uh, bushwhacked my way up and there were three collapsed cabins about halfway up in a clearing a grass clearing there was one at 12 o'clock one at three o'clock and another cabin at seven and in the middle was a huge pit where there were loads of burnt things metal mostly twisted pieces of iron an old stove and I wasn't really too interested in the cabin, so what I did was I, I basically went to the to the fire pit in the middle, 
and uh i found an axe head i was like wow that's that's cool you know because i sort of you know collect things like that really and the plan was to rehang it you know and put a handle on it it was a big axe head but it was an old one and you know sort of opportunities like that can't really be passed up and it was long forgotten so it didn't really feel like i was stealing anything so i took it put it in my bag which was my other lk the the older one and um continued up and i went up right to the top you had to go through like a muir which is basically like a mossy bog you know so my feet were soaked because my boots were pretty shit at the time and i got to the i got to the top and uh and it was beautiful and i sat there and it was windy and it was pretty nice um the only problem being is when the wind stopped these flies called brems came in and brems are basically like a f well it's basically like uh, i guess if you loosely translated it a fire horse fly um so it's like a, a big a big horse fly and, and they're pretty like pretty looking like they're all different colors and stuff but uh yeah when they bite you they literally take a piece of you with them and um you know if you're allergic to them you'll look like the elephant man so uh man this is dense um i'll go this way so yeah i basically sat there for a while and, and like made a drink and thought to myself like oh yeah this is cool but i'm not going to camp here i was only really out on like a recon day so I, I do quite a lot of days like that where i just like go hiking and scouting and you look for fishing spots and stuff i do less than i used to because obviously like got kids and a family now and you know it just becomes less frequent but um yeah i uh god it's quiet but i'm making a lot of noise but it's a good thing um yeah and i went back down and i went back to the clearing basically and, uh, and i was like oh, i'm gonna have a look in one of these old old cabins and um i started i went to the cabin at the seven o'clock position um, and that was actually in line with the jeep so if you imagine like this you've got a cabin at 12 a cabin at three a cabin at seven and down there was the jeep but you had to go through like thick brush to get to it like maybe maybe a couple of maybe a few hundred meters i don't know but it wasn't something you could like just sprint off to you know you had to like trek to it so um yeah i started dragging like an old stove out of the cabin um because i was like wow beautiful old stove it's been abandoned kind of want to have a look at it. it had some cool patterns and designs on it you know some insignia on the front it was it was really cool so basically I, I started dragging it out anyway i was making quite a bit of noise probably less noise than i'm making now and um yeah and then i heard a noise like a whooshing sound and it wasn't bigfoot swinging around his crown jewels it was a tree falling but like falling as as if it were coming at me like a javelin um it was about i don't know seven foot long and about nine inches wide sorry i'm working in imperial but that's just what i do sometimes um and uh, basically uh it, it looked quite clean and i knew straight away like oh it was a spruce because it was like orange so like you know they shed their bark part way up so you know it sort of looked like it had come from the upper part of a tree and then basically it just like shot towards me and like hit sort of the uh well my 12 o'clock position so my right hand side as i turned like that and it struck the cabin and um yeah but basically like i was like wow like a tree just like near missed me that's what i was thinking at the time because that's what you would think and uh basically i looked up and around to see where it had come from and because i was in a grass clearing the only place it could have come from um was like the six o'clock position but but quite further on you know maybe sort of 10 meters down so it didn't really make any sense the logistics of where it had come from so i started to get a bit freaked out especially because i couldn't see any broken spruces around or anything like that for that matter and i basically drew my knife this knife here and uh which isn't rusty by the way that's 
probably jizz. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I drew my knife and I stood there for, for what felt like an eternity. Um, and uh, like, just, you know, like, cause I, I don't know how to describe this, but basically if you hunt, and you hunt small game in trees and in, the, well, anywhere really, actually, even large game, maybe you do the same. I don't have that much experience with large game. But basically you sort of have hunter vision where you, instead of focusing on a single thing, you blur your vision so you're kind of seeing the entire picture and you're like scanning for movement. It's sort of like a more, a more wide angle way of seeing. And, uh, you know, I couldn't see any movement anyway, because normally when if I was after squirrels or, or wood pigeon or something like that, you know, that that's a, usually a decent way of of seeing because you then pick up a sudden jolt in movement when they get comfortable enough to make a run after you've spooked them and they froze. So basically, like I I did that and I saw nothing. So my knife went back in my sheath and I thought, oh, I got, I just got, to, you know, I'm feeling like weird. You know, I rarely get spooked. And it could be a bear. Can't really see any kind of uh, anything else though. But you never know, something could have slipped down. I mean, I haven't been up here yet, so. Here we go, see if we can see some scat. But yeah, so, I can't remember what I was saying. Yeah, um, I thought I'm gonna, I'm gonna go behind the cabin, so the seven o'clock position, and I'm just gonna cut straight through the coppice, like where they'd, maybe taken logs let's say a year two years ago and all the all the like pioneer trees are growing back so you've got like goat willow like salix capria you've got you've got uh like the birch coming through you know that's all the first stuff that really takes over and then when they've planted um they replant spruce and everything else that that sort of then generally takes over and, and the birch then goes away as the forest matures so it was kind of in that state and I, and I walked towards the brush and I, and I sort of parted it and um, took one step in right foot first and an enormous figure to my right hand side probably about four to five meters in just thrashed across diagonally in front of me but obviously you know it at the distance it was not directly in front of me because it didn't go like that you know it went like that and it just freight trained through the, through the brush and and, and and fucked off somewhere and and basically um you know my first thought is an elk you know they're pretty tall but it was but it was an elongated figure my, my second thought a bear but i thought no chance you know the amount of noise i'm making most creatures would be would be shit scared and they'd be gone so you know that that's the sort of thing that's running through my head at the time um and it was just a large a large figure really like and i backed off and, and i then went all the way around so i went back to the five o'clock position which is sorry you're you're looking i'm looking at the other way you're looking at that way I went to the five o'clock position and went all the way round back to the jeep and, and i basically had my axe in my hand the whole time because i took it off my lk and I was crapping myself and I got, on the, I got on the truck and left. I've not been back there in six years. And it's not that far away from where I live. And weirdly, I was talking to a lady ab about it who's a bit open-minded. She's Swedish, but she lives in the UK. And um, I told her about it because she saw my last video and was sort of joking about stuff and asked me whether I'd actually ever seen anything. And, um, and I told her about that experience. And she, she asked me to show her on the GPS coordinates where they were. And it was a burnt down Sami village um, that had a lot of like misfortune around that period. Not that old. Um, and she, she agreed to come back there with me and return the axe head, which I still haven't taken back. But she went back to the UK, so maybe next time she comes I'll go there with her. But it's a funny story. Um, there's a lot of strange tales about that burnt down town. And interestingly, now I've sort of outed it to her. I've heard a lot of other stories coming back. So I'm not saying it's Bigfoot and I'm not saying that, um, you know, that's what I saw because, you know, at the end of the day, I, I just, I don't believe in Bigfoot, basically. I, I say, it. I mean, not here in Sweden anyway, like there's some crazy shit happening in the US and some of it's like, you know, 
what 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 do we know but um like here in sweden i just don't believe it but whether i you know i'm open-minded as i say you know like maybe some some bad energy some bad juju was there and um you know it smelt my ass and it was just intoxicated by it and it wanted more and that was that so although i've put a joke on the end of that a shit one um because you know i can't that's kind of what i do when it's getting too serious basically ruin it um but that that's the story anyway that, that's what happened to me and uh it hasn't stopped me camping as you know like i go out a lot i'm out on my own now just walking through the middle of nowhere um and sure if something goes down i'm probably not going to be very happy about it but the point is is like it's all about feeling the vibe isn't it and i don't really feel anything too strange right now but we're coming up to the spruce wood i've made my way up there there is definitely uh bear activity here i've just seen some scat and uh you know let's uh let's hope they've heard me a long time ago or maybe they're curious about my experience and they want to know more the rustula rain's coming in some big old boulders around here you've got to be careful where you put your feet because uh you slip and go down a hole you crack an ankle And this is crazy, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's very boulderous. I'm not sure if I'll progress any further. I want to, but uh, when you're on your own, sometimes it's just like, yeah, I don't know. It's got to go with your gut, haven't you? But, uh, yeah, cool place very attractive but at the same time quite ominous in the way it looks but, uh, I think this might be as far as I go I think I might head on back and uh, go out on the boat again see if I can do some more fishing but uh, yeah I'm gonna make my way down uh, and go along the the ridge line where it's a bit safer to to hike considering like there's so many gaps in the boulders you just kind of slip through i really don't want to crack an ankle like my mate of mine did that and he broke his leg um there we go let's go down a bit Collect some blueberries. Those mosquitoes out there are fierce, absolutely fierce. was to reposition the vehicle so I could use the awning because it's on that side 
um, but now the rain's just like literally died down <laughs> as I've moved it but it is supposed to rain for the rest of the day now it kind of kills my chances of going out on the boat just because you know being on a lake in a boat in a thunder and lightning storm is like yeah it's not it's not a great idea basically but there we go I'm gonna make some lunch This is something I meant to do last time, but I really don't have, um, yeah, any kind of real large bags on me. Well, that's it from me on this video. I am going to spend one more night here, but not park like that. I'm going to actually take it around the corner again. It just really depends on the weather, it's on and off. This summer's just been an absolute washout of thunderstorms and rain with patches of humid heat, like it is now. And I think the mosquitoes are absolutely loving it. Um, but it's a beautiful location, there's a lot of activity out on the lake now. So I'm kind of tempted to get out there again with the fly rod and just see what's going on rather than pulling in pike all the time, which I obviously have no interest in. To be honest, I'm more of a person who fishes to eat than fishes for fun. You know, like for me, I, I want to get, you know, some fish in the freezer and eat that later or have it while I'm out camping. So when I come out like this and I fish, it's, it's nice to like forage for some mushrooms, get some fish, you know, pick some berries and things and like kind of add that to your to your meal out here, really, or, or, or take stuff home as well. You know, I, I've always enjoyed that. Um, but uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, normally I wouldn't really sort of film too much of me hiking uh, but you know some people last time said we'd love to see more of the area so you know I thought I'd, I'd leave that in and obviously I told you that little story about what happened to me like I think it was six years ago now be nice to me I'm not saying it was Bigfoot <laughs> um, I'm just saying like it was a weird experience that I couldn't explain and um, yeah, and it, but it hasn't stopped me doing what I do, you know, it hasn't stopped me getting out and enjoying myself because, you know, because I generally think there's a logical explanation to everything, or at least it seems to be anyway, um, to a degree. But, you know, it's good to keep an open mind, isn't it? Who knows the truth? But um, thanks for watching. Appreciate your support on Patreon. Uh, appreciate you commenting or whatever you want to do on this video. And uh, I'll see you again on the next one obviously if you have any questions about anything and you, you're interested in any kind of specific videos you can always leave some ideas below in the comment section and I'll um I'll take a look so uh take care of yourselves and uh see you next time hopefully